Hi, I'm Eric Hauer. I'm the director of the Lung Cancer Research Center here at the Moffitt Cancer Center. And today I'm delighted to be in the Moffitt Proteomics Corps where I'm joined by Dr. John Kuhlman, who's the director of the Corps. John's graciously agreed to be with us today to teach us something about proteomics and how this relates to lung cancer. So John, thanks for being here today. Thank um, you. Can you tell us what, uh, what is proteomics? It's the study of the structures that are in the cell, the enzymes, the things that do the communication, the function, things that keep everything alive on a day-to-day -day basis. What can proteomics tell us about lung cancer? So proteomics is a new toolbox, a new way of looking at things. And instead of addressing just one question at a time, the way we have with basic science, cancer biology, you can look at a large number of proteins at the same time, try and understand how they interact with each other, what the messages are, how they create cancer, how it progresses, how it responds to therapy. There are a very large number of questions you can address just by using a different set of tools that we have. Having the whole human genome sequence was a great advantage for us because it's like having crossword puzzles with all the answers in the back of the book. You have all the possible plans or blueprints, then you can just fill in what the machines might be. And so it's, it's a very good complement to that and as you want to understand the function of the genetic aberrations in cancer, the things that cause the cancer, uh, you have to go from, from genes to proteins and understand how that actually changes inside the cell and how that makes it a cancerous cell. So we've heard that mass spectrometers can be used to detect these things called biomarkers in the blood of patients with lung cancer. Can you tell us what, uh, what proteomics is doing for biomarker discovery in, in lung cancer using blood? So a, a biomarker is any type of measurement that you'd like to make to help assist in clinical decision making. And that can be from blood or tissue, any type of patient sample. And you know, one of the things that we've been working on is trying to get the depth through the blood. So as you can imagine, there are lots of proteins in blood that are there to maintain the function of blood, which is to maintain the, the, the coordination of the body and the, the overall processes. But also, things that get released from your tumor tissue become circulating biomarkers. And so there's been an effort to dig as deep into that group of proteins as we can to see what's related to disease. So we've heard in the last year that uh, CT scans may be helpful to detect early lung cancers. But the problem is, is that not only do they detect early lung cancers, but they also find some benign nodules. Do you see a future that proteomics can measure things in the blood to help clinicians figure out whether or not a nodule is a tumor or just a benign scar? Well, absolutely, and certainly there are a lot of proteins like prostate-specific antigen, for example, that get measured in the blood now that were discovered before the advent of proteomics. And so we, we hope that this technology is going to be able to add to that lexicon of, of biomarkers and give us new things to look for in different types of disease. So, so in addition to blood, um, uh, work that you've been doing is directly looking at uh, tumor tissues from patients with lung cancer. And you're right. using mass spectrometers to understand the circuitry of proteins. Can you tell us a little bit about that? So we think that the most direct way to make an impact in patient care right now is to look at treatment scenarios and understand what treatment is going to be effective for the patient, what's happening in the patient that makes them resistant to a particular drug and then would require another therapy. And so we want to look at the expression of the proteins. So that's kind of the first step, which is how many copies of a particular protein are in the tumor. And then beyond that, we want to look at the molecular switching that goes on. So there, there are lots of on-off switches that you have on each protein that determine whether it's functional or not. And that's another thing that we can get at with proteomics. Uh, we would typically call that actually phosphoproteomics mainly, although there are a number of other modifications that can also uh, can also determine the function. So, so if I heard you right, what, what, these, what this technology can do is it can take a drug that may work in leukemia and you can figure out that it 
hits a target that works in lung cancer and we can take an existing drug in leukemia and make it work in lung cancer. Is that right? Is that, right? that would be one scenario that would be very effective. Yes. So, so why is proteomics important to patients and patient advocates? So it just really is a, a new way of doing things. It's a different way of, of doing business. It's a new set of tools that allow you to address kind of larger hypotheses instead of focusing on traditional antibody-based methods where you have to have a set of tools to address each specific question. This is a set of tools that you can broadly use to address almost any type of question. And so it's just, it's a good complement to the other things that are going on in, in the research laboratories here. And uh, you know, it certainly is adding quite a bit to the community in terms of its, uh, its ability to look at things in, in, from a new direction. People would say from an unbiased way because you're not asking one specific question anymore. You have many things that you can discover in each experiment. Well, John, thanks for uh, taking the morning to be with us today. I, th I think the uh, main lesson that I learned from talking with John today is that you know, genomics is about looking at the DNA sequences um, and is very important for understanding cancers, but proteomics is going that next step to understand the, the products of these genes and also how these pro proteins fit together as communities and maybe how we can start repurposing existing drugs for new purposes for lung cancer. So thank you for taking the time to be with us today. If you have any questions, feel free to email on the uh, uh, address listed on the screen, and I'll see you next time.